deck. Yeah. So it'll be just a best of one between Magico and Itlander. Them will do their best to, to go forward. Magico a bit favored again, but Itlander has been putting in the work, right? Both it, taking out Mr. Kareem, taking out Zhao. If, even if he loses, he's definitely number three in this tournament. But that he's is looking for work. that. He is looking for number one. He might just get it going forward. I mean, beating Magical is going to be a significant, significant hurdle. We saw, I mean, Santa Claus, we saw the first game between that, where Santa just, like, they kind of ran circles around Eatlander the second game. The first game was, if I recall correctly, quite close. It was the Orzen versus the Jari game. Yeah. What is the thing, right? When Santa plays slow, he plays slow, and uh, mm -hmm. it's going to be hard to break him, or, and Santa's not going to Yeah, because that, that's right, because it was, Eatlander was a Jari both times. The first game, it was slowly, Itlander could never quite build up the army to contend with Santa's army. So Santa kept constantly building armies that were bigger and bigger, and Itlander could never really cull them, yep. but they also could never get their own army big enough. Just to come, it was just a little bit farther behind, they were getting raided a little bit more often, it was just that little bit of extra damage. Yep. Yeah, Santa not going for the Killer Instinct type of build, it's really going for no. slow and steady wins the race. No, which, which is has been, perfect for him. Yep. Has been working out for him, getting all the way to the finals. Uh, but yeah, the lower bracket finals is coming up. Match go with Lander. Both of them. I uh, wonder which map we're going to start up with. That is up to Magical. We'll see what he wants. There's so many choices. Some of them work. <laughs> Some of them break. And okay, Lost Province. We're sticking in Lost Province, sticking to what everyone knows and li and loves until they get removed and traded for the next one. I don't think Lost Province is going to get removed or traded for a while. Like, we have some only oh, no, one no. maps on deck, but that's going to take a while for those to be completely set up. And it's just... Lost Province has a lot of history at this point. I'm looking forward to seeing that uh, that new 1v1 map. It looks very interesting. I have a lot of... Uh, ideas for how the matchup will evolve as the, the path straight forward to your opponent's base is blocked by a lot of rocks which means that you might want to go around but if you go around that just means that your opponent can go through another path and it'll be dangerous it'll be a lot of attack fast a lot of expansion patterns that are not as you'd expect <sighs> yeah there's this ring across the entire top side which is interesting yeah we, we've seen it somewhat from here and there not, not to this degree. I'm really, I'm really intrigued how it's going to work out. Mm -hmm. well, we'll see in the next fight. You mean the next patch? Presumably. Yeah. Oops. I want to actually name it properly. Ooh. Itlander, Itlander back to his Ajari ways. And Magical Bastard as always. Yeah, actually Magical has been playing a lot more Zol than anything else. He's He's been a big Aru fan for a while. But they were playing Mal a lot before. I think oh, yeah. just Zol became Zol. Like Zol actually became not just Mala, but with slightly weird units. Yep. Except for that and... one bit where Zol was Mala, but I get free pyre when I kill your stuff. So people have just been talking about Mallow having a bit of issues dealing with that first Absolver push. It's possible to defend, but it's just very, very hard to do, right? It's a bit easier with Absolve with the Hunting Grounds, giving that double damage is just enough to push through that, that big burst of Absolver damage. Mm -hmm. And that's a bit why we've been seeing a bit more Zol lately. Wouldn't be surprised if it was also the Underspines, just because that extra range they get oh, from Underspines the great. Underspines are great. In either case, Magical going for the safe strat, opening up with early, like opening up with the early military before the expansion. The expansion is actually wait, no, the expansion is the same timing. They they were risky. Mm -hmm. They went for it. They figured Eidlander's not going to be going hard, and he was right. It's a risky take, and for this time it was worth it. I mean, he's he's still heading for a lot of Efer. He's not. Uh... I mean, there are people oh, always well, you have to. You have to. Like, with yeah. Aro, you have to go double ether. Often you have to go triple ether. Like, yeah, natural ether as well. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering right now. It's like, huh, he didn't go for the 30 for quite yet. It will go down eventually. It will. They needed to get the Bone Stalkers up. 
Yeah, Early 30 would question. mean would mean two fewer bone stalkers. Yeah. That's the question. What do you want first? Do you want a bit deeper? But getting those bone stalkers out is fun because you can contest for power, you can kill some units, you can kill the teapots, smash them to pieces before you can do anything. Well, like I said, Hundergrounds is a counter tool, which means that Magical's gonna need all the power they can get. Oh yeah. And Itlander is not in a position to come contest this one. He'll, he'll, he'll try his best to come in, but just a little bit too slow. Sipari jumping on top, but Magical is getting in position, and yeah, he'll get it. Yeah, there's no snipe. Oof. There is no snipe. Magical taking a bit of damage, but losing nothing to get... Oh, well, they're ready. They can drop Zul if they want to. They can drop Hundergrounds pretty soon. Oh, was Itlander's got some solid control early on. Sorry, Magical's got some solid control early on. Itlander's going to be... On the back foot. And now Magical can contest the second Pyro Camp or try and get some Sipari kills. Or yeah, wait, teapot camp, they Richie? could go for the No, they're not gonna even bother. The Atlanta knows the possibility of a teapot steal. Oh, magical. This mm. is No, Atlanta. <laughs> okay. Atlanta is hey, magical. Ready no, 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 don't don't do yeah, yeah, yeah. Atlanta's Atlanta's not being aggressive, which is good for Magical. Just not as long as Magical doesn't yet. burn their army. Yeah, he's not being aggressive. <laughs> not yet. yet. Yes. We saw against Stanta that Eatlander likes to build up at least four Absolvers before moving out. Oh, and he's getting them. Yeah, those four Absolvers are coming, like you said. And that teapot from Magical is ready to get that power. <laughs> he gets it. Poof. Eatlander was ready to come yeah, in for no. the last second for the kill, but no. No teapot tonight for Eatlander. No. Keeping the Icors out of vision of the teapots to surprise him as he moves out. And that's really that's really a big point, right? Once the four Absolvers are on their way... You send in those Icors and you might need to send something back to defend. Uh, but of course, if you kill your opponent, who cares? And uh, those four Absolvers might just do the trick. Those four Absolvers are going to be running into a couple of Resonance? That's not a huge defense. There's Hunting Ground already. So Magical very much is prepared for this. Baiting back in. Eatlander setting up the defenses. Undergrounds is on, is ready, it's online, and it is getting kind of stuffed up by Heaven's Aegis, to be honest. Yeah, that's the thing, right? But the <laughs> Resonance are here. Resonance are here, and that's what you need for your defense, but is it enough as they are set up? All four Absolvers are set up. Oh, no Ice Wars coming around the back to try to help. They're not doing anything. Both of them go down, having dealt no damage. The Resonance don't have a place to set up either. Now, they don't exactly need to set up. They have about the same range, so... As you can see, they're able to deal with it as... Oh, man. But it's the expansion. Magical doesn't want... If the Magical loses that natural expansion, they don't have a whole lot to work with here. If Itlander oh. takes that out, they can just leave. Yeah, that's his goal right now. And, oh, man. Get one Absolver left. And Magical with his perfect micro right now. Taking care of it, of course. Oh, man, it's so close. The Absolver, what does he want to deal with? Guess the Resonant. No, it's gone! The, the natural's dead! Oh. Not... What?! survives with one <laughs> HP or something. Oh, man. Pixel of hell. Magical keeps himself in the game. Oh, man. That was an expensive loss as well. Four Absolvers. That was a big push. Powerful. He can try and get back into the other side with Sipari or whatnot to deal with it. But, uh, wow. Yeah, that's gonna be... Itlander's quickly back on the map. He has his Absolvers ready to roll. Gets as much damage as he can. Gets the power up and running in the middle. But behind this, uh, Magical is getting his Resonance. And with enough Resonance, he can deal with this push in the next phase. I mean, they had the yeah. expansion. They didn't, did not lose their economy. Yeah. So. Yeah, and uh, Itlander lost a lot of army. So at this point, Magical might just be a little ahead. But now Itlander getting all that power back can help him survive for the next push or a push he wants. The big thing is Heaven's Aegis stops with one attack, and Resonant are not about a lot of quick attacks, they're very powerful attacks. So they're very so Heaven's Aegis is actually perfect against uh against the Resonance. Makes me wonder if we're gonna see what if if when air is gonna come in. I mean sooner or later you figured match was gonna be swapping into if nothing else, Behemoths. Yeah, but not quite yet. He keeps true, making resonance. True. There's so many resonance so far. He just never stops making them. They don't have much reason to change, honestly. Like, I, I bring it up as a future thing, but at the moment, nothing's threatening resonance. Like, they might as well do their thing. Warden... Okay, Warden is threatening resonance a little bit.
But not that much. The Bone Stalkers are always there. A magical can, magical can stop this. Eatlander. Eatlander is applying very little pressure oh, from man. Magical's perspective. Oh man, he's jumping right out. The no! That poor Warden. Oh, that's an unfortunate loss for him. But at the same time, he's attacking the main base. He's doing as much damage as he can. He needs to push forward, but the Resonance are in position, and there's too many Resonance. He's trying to push forward. Even Zoe comes out to help with the defense. <laughs> and yeah, there's nothing left for this army. The Absolver siege up at the last minute to try and do as much damage. But Doesn't do Magical anything. does not care. Magical is jumping on top of his opponent, pushing forward as much as he can. Slowly but surely going for the kill. Well, Eatlander. They've still clearly relying on the Absolver. To my like to my mind, it's possibly for a little too long. Like the resonants are out. The Absolvers don't have a lot of room to actually do anything. Like you drop a Blood Will or an Underspine, and there is no way that Magical is going to be outranged by Itlander. Yeah, but at this point, oh, no, I, I was going to say this. The Sipari, if they jump on top, they can get in the right position and dislodge this, but that's it's five too late. resonance. That's it's, five it resonance. It is too, you need, you need something in the air. You need something in the air, or you need to have the Arc Mothers to get that damage reduction. Yeah. Otherwise, or, no. Yeah, or get the perfect Arc or something, but it's going to be hard to set up as Magical is setting up an Arc of his own to make sure he can't get surrounded like that. Oh, is man? Oh, Yitlander. Looking to go for a bit of a run by. Risky move. They have obviously less of their army at home to defend. Ooh, and Magical even staying up by hunting around the back. If ever he, if ever he feels too attack, he can just head back into. Oh, Warden finds a perfect position. Near perfect. Does bait out some of the Bone Stalkers. Will open things up a bit. Yitlander taking advantage of the Bone Stalkers being out of position. Goes in. Drops the Aegis. Drops the heal. Takes out one resonant. Second resonant might go down. Second resonant does go down. The Bone Stalkers cannot push in with the deployed Absolvers. Eatlander slowly but surely pushing in, but does not get the damage, prompting Magical to counterattack. Eatlander forced to heal and not defend their third expansion. Oof, coming in. Oh, and Magical baiting unit after unit to their death. Doing his best, and here comes the Warden from the back, attacking, and oh no, that poor Warden. <laughs> oh man, I was hoping it's to survive the attack. Time. Man, that's clearly the idea. Use the Warden to distract the Bone Stalkers to set up everything else, which this time looks like it works. Atlanta breaks the resonance. Magical yeah. relying now on the Red Seers to hold the line, but the Bone Stalkers cannot quite fight into the Absolvers. Yeah, Atlanta has broken the, the bush. Yeah, as soon as you can take care of the zone control, you're fine. And look at the army value; they're back to equal. Of course, behind this, Magical did double expanse their four base to three bases. That will give him a bit of a small lead as the game moves forward. We'll see what yeah. tech they're yeah. heading up for next. Oh, okay. Both of yeah. them expanding pretty close. Yeah, they're responding kind. Magical, they have the order of the Red Seers, and the Behemoths are on the way. They only have one bone canopy, so Behemoths will not be a significant threat for the next few minutes. Like, Magical is going for them more as a thing to go for and not as a big push. May not matter. The resonance, actually, the resonance, the bone stalkers jumping on everything. Eatlander, what advantage they may have gained from their base defense is slowly being lost. Mm. Oh, teapot checking out for bases. You'll see. Our, oh, underspine. That, that's something I'm not used to. Oh, jumping on top of these units. Not sure if Magical really wants to commit to that. He does not. Heads back home almost immediately. Eatlander. Securing their third and soon their fourth. Now is going to be needing to find a way to break what Magical's built up. Because Magical's getting their fifth, they have their fourth already. Itlander's well aware of this, but how do you break into this when you just have fewer units on the board than your opponent? Yeah. Uh, you find a way, you know? You just uh, push forward until it works. That's, That's true. How you don't need that many units to actually harass with or raid with or deal a lot of damage with as a Jari. But oh. yeah, still oh, gotta works. be careful. Oh, that poor resonant. Wait. Okay. No, it's it's done. Like... It is out of position. There's and it no paid for it. Actually, and this point, or... Yeah, it finds a good position. Those Saushin are doing so much work for Elander. Of course, it may be all for nothing if they lose their mining. <laughs> Magical going the back lines with an yet another run by. The Magical yeah, special. Either. Always need those fire singers somehow at some point to deal with uh, all the run bys that our better players are always looking to do. 
Well, I will give Yitlander props. They did not send everything back. Just yeah. do Spar to go back to defend while everything oh, else goes to attack. Yeah, they're trying. Go with the multi prong. The oh, the blood plague. So much damage. Getting rid of all the absolvers for basically free. Most of Atlanta's army has been completely destroyed. They have been routed, and now they have no way to defend any of these bases. Yeah, at the very least, he lost all his expensive units. All absolvers are dead. The counterattack was nice here, looking for a multi prong, but Magical was ready. Had some static defense. Static defense doing the work and keeping his opponent out of the way. Eatlander. They're falling behind gradually. We saw this again with Santa. Like Eatland it's just it's the attrition. The attrition just Eatlander tends to lose out on that. Hmm. It's all the war of attrition that Magical's really developed a liking to, right? He's really become quite good at his war of attrition of getting the right kills, getting the right moments, and slowly but surely getting his his way to victory. Well, that's what we're seeing, and that's... Magical has... They've turned it around. They have a full advantage on their side. Behemoths don't really have anything to counter them. I mean, they don't have... There are no Castigators. There are some Zephyrs, but... No Castigators, no... Nah, no, no Sentinels. Sentinels. None. No Thrones either, which... Nope. You know, at some point, if someone's on their Tier 3 units, their ultimate units, you kind of want your own ultimate units as well, and... This might only Magical Generally has... speaking, yeah. That's yeah. that's usually the way it goes. Yeah, now Magical has a pretty decent tech lead with that. Uh, next push could be very damaging. At least they're both still on equal number of bases. Lander has that going for him. As okay, a few free kills as most of the uh, Magical's units and Behemoths are a bit slower, come in a bit <clears throat> late for the party. As does the Blood Plague. It's a bit of damage in, but I would call it a whiff. Oh, Magical in the jump on the Resolvers. One goes down before they even deploy. The two come in, but the Blood Plague is more than enough to keep them from going that much farther. Yeah, the Blood Plague perfectly placed right on top of them. Salshin no. to recover. Oh yeah, Salshin have been doing the work this game. As you were mentioning, Salshin really just getting all the power, but it might not be enough. As There's a lot of units here for Magical. Yeah, the eight lander set up. Magical cannot break through this easily. They can run by on third base. Make that... Make that miserable. That's uh, that's what he's all about. But yeah, he gets the kills the and those overs. Yeah, he's just waiting for his Kedos to recover, able to throw the full, uh, the full sixteen of them all at once. Run by once again from Eatlander, but it's more of a desperate last ditch effort to do something. Is Eatlander? No, run by for a base is not going to be a favorable trade. Should not want it doesn't even work. <laughs> Yeah, the behemoths come in, and the symbiotes, again, the workers showing their power their power to destroy their opponent's units. It's not enough, and Magico is not done with this push. He's pushing forward as more behemoths are ready to join his army. Slowly but surely, dishing out the pain. No, Eatlander. Well, last stand coming in here. Magical sees there's no easy way to break this, but they also don't have to. You can just break everything else. <laughs> just the Ikors will do. Uh, moving into Moats. Did he get strong? No, they just move out of the way. But the Absolver comes in. Uh, the Ikors did the kills, though. They get, eh, they get at least half of the Moat line. Now just moving slowly but surely forward. Well, one more base goes down. At least it's sufficiently threatened. Opening up the fourth. Yeah, it landers. There's... Atlanta's old tactic, trying to pull their opponents away, being used against them. Yeah. Magical finding that wide open, breaks it. Now Atlander, just... can they push back on this? Yeah, they lose two, two of his behemoths on the road there, but with the blood plate, there's only two absolvers here, and behemoths on their own are able to push forward, get the first absolver, second one goes down, and even though the Zephyrs can shoot up, the Bone Stalkers are still there to support. Getting on top of those Zephyrs, and that seems like the end for Itlander as Magico pulls through and moves in his way to the finals. Congratulations, Magical. Gets the run back on Santa. Yeah. Or, well, gets to do the run back on Santa. Yep. Yeah. It's going to be one up on Santa in the grand finals, best of five, to end this tournament. And as always, Santa will have the opening advantage of one game's advantage. Does he also get to pick the map, or that's on the Magical? I actually don't know how it works. 
Yeah, because I mean, is it a force map this time? Yeah. The... Uh, oh, it's embar. Wait, what? Oh, okay. Embargo is Embargo's forced. broken. Oh, so I guess we're not doing embargo. No, we're not going to do that. Force him, force fools bay. Let's go. It's nothing you can say. I think it's just forcing not. They're forcing not to uh, lost province. So I'm fine with that. Yeah. He's a decent way to start. Forcing the forcing the Bay of Fools, which Santa did win a game on that as well, so. Yep. Alright. Well, since I have power over this, I will do the thing. Oh yes. The power, the power of the fools. Or the embargo. Which is also pretty foolish. Would be considering how broken it is. Well, I don't know how broken it is specifically. I think one v one it might be okay, but I know for two v two it's definitely broken. What what happens again? Teal doesn't appear, or? Yep. Oh, that's not too bad for one v one though. Might be still. I broken. think there might be some turdishes as well. Hmm. Okay. Let's not risk it for the finals. That would not be smart. All right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, final games of the tournament. The finals are coming up. We, we've seen these two fight each other again and again and already in this tournament just once. We've seen different matchups as Magical has been favored in Zol and Santa has been favor favoring Orzum. But I could see Santa trying something out, but maybe not in the grand finals where he really wants to take this home. He only needs to win two games. Magical needs to win three of them, so... They do, and, and again, Santa, this is their chance of taking a tournament. Mm, and the Alpha, it's been a while. What, well, at least a 1v1. I think he's... No, I, I, he hasn't won a 2v2 either, has he? I... No, they haven't won any tournament. Mm. Wow. Well, I expect yeah, they have, to, they've gotten several second-place finishes. They have not won a tournament. Like, five second-place finishes at this point. Darn. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so yeah, this I'm, is this definitely the stakes are there for Santa Claus. Yeah, we want him to we, we want him to show what he's made of. But of course, Magical doesn't want to make it easy for him. Magical sh showing what he's got. As a uh, Magical has been the has already known the power of the Kong, having been second place in like five turns in a row before finally getting his first win. This time, it's uh, Santa trying to do the same, getting into the win before. Winning everything that follows. A bit like Magico. At least that's the hope. Well, we'll see what happens. Yeah, he's landed pointing out Embargo had neutral citadels everywhere. That's that's what I figured the mm. that's what I thought the error was. There we go. So, magical Oh, it's Mala this time. Alright. Bit more of a classic thing coming in. Santa oh. Claus. Once again is awesome. No shenanigans? Are there shenanigans early? Well, early Santa going for Aoife first. Aoife first. Aoife first is a bit of a shenanigan, as that could be the start of a proxy, right? That's how you start proxies, by going for Aoife first. Uh, but seems Not content. the expansion, though. Not yeah. with the expansion, you don't. Yeah, content to go for the expansion, going for the unnatural natural, as the one has a bit less alloy, so it won't last as long as the other one. That's yeah, safer, I'm... mind you. Oh, yeah. It definitely feels safer to me. We have a tower right there. Yeah. Yeah. It's perfect. And smaller choke points and a ramp. Actually, ramp on both sides. Yeah. And also a good tower position. Or the one has no tower at all. Yep. It used to, but there was a change recently where 1v1, 1v1 versions have fewer towers available. So in 2v2, there's a tower here. But in 1v1, there no longer is. Wait, is there still? I thought it just got moved forward. I thought all the towers just got moved in, like in the middle, in the middle of the map. Like oh, those, yeah. Maybe. Yeah, I think those are I've... those are new ones. And then there's one on the other side as well. Well, I know that there was shifts to make one v one fewer towers. Yep. I'm but to I'm really make sure the two v two stuff is gone. Yeah. Okay. Bastion coming online. They scally each other out. Uh, Santa pushing his his buildings a bit forward. Not that far forward. Just it's, enough that. Yeah. This is the typical setup that for Orson Fool's Bay or Orzum. This is this is where Fool's Bay Orzum goes for Santa. Yeah. Unless you think his opponent's going aggressive, but he's no he knows his opponent not going aggressive. He put down his base. Yeah, they saw the expansion. 
Okay, mm -hmm. Soul Foundry just blocking the way again to make sure no units can just slip through. Have to go for the Citadels or the Towers. So Magical right now is looking... I mean, they're looking pretty good economically. Santa's the one that's going to be needing to do some damage. Either they get some Pyre or get some economic damage to make this earlier Legion Hall pay off. Make the early Aether pay off. Because obviously oh. early Aether, early Absolvers, is the point. But you got to make that actually pay rent. Yeah. Well, he definitely, he's definitely going for some type of Absolver push as we go. As, uh, especially against Malice can be quite powerful. But Magical heading up for the kill as fast as possible. Okay, no. Santa has seen this before. He's seen the game and heads for it first. They played the game uh, before. Yeah, Mass Hunter. Bit in the wrong position. Uh, we'll get... Oh, no, Santa. We'll get out. We'll escape. He had the body block, but not anymore. What's Magical? Oh, getting this close. Yeah, no, no, Magical. You cannot fight this head on. You know this. You know you can't fight it head on. Yeah, he's I, also played the game before, yeah. Yeah, they have. How about that? They should know that. They should know that. Yeah, well. Oh, wow. What. Oh, wow. That's a position and a half. <laughs> Just overlooking the pass. Anything magical tries to do to get out of there. Tower! Yeah. Doesn't take the expansion, but hey, doesn't mean any reinforcements have to deal with the tower. And also you get some hallowed ground there, which is pretty nice. Oh, right. So, yeah, and we're seeing Matt, Santa Claus... They have that hallowed ground. Once it's up, they, all they need to do is just push in. I mean, as it is, they're pushing in early, because why not? Get the timing yeah, and, in there. Yeah, then Magico coming back with his bone stalkers, but might be... Is it going to be too late? As Magico has sat it, found the perfect position, kept it for the finals. Absolvers are here. Absolvers will siege up quickly. Magico does get a full surround, though. He has a nice vision to go for that surround. Well, they need, and... they need to be able to actually get some advantage off that surround. The Absolvers are going to make that so tricky. Yeah, guess And the already the Neurosite goes down. Oh, man, Expansion that's... might go down. Two resonants are on the way, so the neurosite wasn't taken out in time to stop this completely. But hey, this expansion, this expansion's gone. The resonance will not be up in time. Magical cannot do much. Santa Claus just just needed to get rid of this expansion. Magical going for the counter attack. Smart move. It's one we'll of the things you, you gotta do, right? Yeah, at least a small something because resonants are out. They won't have their deploy mode as that is research at the neurosite, and he only yep. gets two to get more. He'll have to build something else. Uh, Santa needs to be careful not to get in the wrong position. <laughs> At this Santa point, uh, Resin's, yes, Resident's going to the top of the hill. Smart, they won't be able to get attacked. And, ooh, get... Okay, barely almost got an Absolver. And Santa, yeah, he needs to defend this. Oh, oh he still has an Empire Broken. Oh, I mean, yeah, they do, but Magical... They can take that... Oh, no, that's never going to stop. I was going to say, if they can take out the expansion, that obviously will even things out, but they can't. And, of course, Santa with that tower at the top, healing up, and Magical has no idea. I thought the Hallowed Ground would go down to the bottom base, but we don't see it at all. Yeah, so did I. Okay, well, oh. they figured it out now. Yeah, oh, no. But he's taking so much damage. Will he get the kill? Okay, he does not, at least. Doesn't matter. Doesn't even matter for getting the kill right now. Santa, they have the position to work with to do basically anything. Stopping Magical's approach. Getting the third. Santa, it's their game to lose now. Magical has no bases. They have very little army. They are desperately rebuilding as quickly as possible to get something to push. Which does mean Santa only has so much time. Yeah, rebuild the neurosite. And, okay, I like this from Resonance. Getting as much damage as they can. Space to lose Antari moving around. Uh, there will come Santa. a time, though, where Santa would need to move back. He doesn't want to get stuck up top on well, the they, hill. Yeah, they're not pushing. They're, they're not going for early kill. So they have to push. They have to leave. Yeah, but losing those units as uh, Magico moves out, which might be the case at this point. Yeah, here's the tower, and the Absolvers are here. They're here to uh, perhaps die. There's nowhere to uh, run. Maybe they can die. If they go down swinging, they at least stop Magical from doing a ton of damage. Oh. Does prompt reinforcements. Oh, okay, there's a reinforcement. Okay, now now you can actually hold this. Maybe. Barely. Magical Barely. still has more resonance. Yeah, the resonance are powerful. Resonance are in position, and here comes the counterattack. So the magical behind all this is never stopping the counterattacks. He wants to do as much damage as he can. But of course, even if he kills that third base, it's still two bases to one. That is a difficult situation to deal with. And Santa, they are prepared if they want to go in. Oh yeah, they're going with the Zentari for a run by. Uh, and a scepter on the other here. side. Flanking on all sides. Cracking the base wide open. Oh, okay. It wasn't okay. It wasn't omnivore yet. It was still Erevor. Can't trade it up, but at this point, units come back. Gives a bit of an opening if Santa wants to. Not more. They than do, that. but Santa's distracted by magical at home. Yeah, not 
taking advantage of the opening they've created themselves. Did lose the third base? Oh, but the scepter can attack into those resonance if you before the mass hunters come in. It oh. can, but magical is getting all the time in the world. Ma Santa Claus is basically giving magical an opportunity to recover, and magical is taking it as far as they can go. Yeah, and okay, attack on the other side from Santa. That, you know, that, that, that Amber Room is a bit out of position here. Can it get sniped? And it will. Does Resonant Up try to defend, but it's not enough. The rest of the forces looking to come into position. Okay, it's the normal Resonance coming in. That's the end of them. And that's and, the uh, end of the game! Santa Claus, with that one snipe, takes game one. Now one game away from winning the whole tournament. Ooh. Very hey, well played this. there. That was... That, I mean, the one... One Amber Womb. Take that out, mm. and it's all over. Yeah, it was loss after loss, and Magical knew Santa had, was already on two bases, and at that point, it's just so hard to come back from. Magical, you it know, is. I'll and Santa Claus gave them the all game. the time in the world to do so, too. Yeah. Magical was like, okay, I'll just get them in the next one. That's fine. Yep, lost problems, Magical, which did work for Magical kind of 50-50, but yep. hey, it still worked. So this may be it. Like, Santa Claus is on match point. They're on tournament point. Yeah, let's go Santa. Let's do it for once. Let's uh, finish this <laughs> off. Your second place. It's time for that first place. Santa's ready. Magico doesn't want to let it happen, but at this point, does he get a choice? Does he get to decide what Santa does? They do. They do, in fact, get a potential choice. They, they're the only ones, in fact, who has a choice. A going Ajari. Skipping out on his Aru roots. Heading for the prophet of... No, they're not prophets. They're Arash, Arash. of Deliverance. Yeah. Not sure what Arash means. Oh, Arash! That's the name of the map that's that became Frontiers. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Okay. Interesting. I have to go back and look at that. I'm curious now. Yeah, Vanguard Arash. That is that is what became Frontiers. Hmm. Well, Magical Aoife first. Santa Aoife first as well. That is the latest meta in this. Yep. In this er, match early Aether into early Absolver. This will be just both sides of Absolver push. Magical with the proxy moat. Making sure not to get scouted by that teapot. Yep. Getting right out of the way. And second teapot won't be out for a while, so he has a bit of time to set it up. Santa Magic. similarly going for... No, not similarly at all. Not at all similar. Going for a completely different approach. Early expansion. And, okay, where is that? Well, also expansion. So it's just heading for the tower to do some damage? I think... No, it's dropping oh, the Legion Hall. Proxy. proxy Legion Hall. Oof. Spicy. But it got... Spotted by Santa's moat, which is also going out to maybe make a proxy Legion Hall. Yeah, and that's why Magical turns back. He doesn't want to deal with it. And Santa checking all his base, like, okay, where is it? Uh, doesn't see it. He's quite happy with that. And Santa behind all this heads home. Santa getting the towers of his opponents. Both players going for very behind, very backwards Legion Halls. Both scared of their opponents proxying. Smart. I'd also be afraid. It's time to be afraid. Santa not too far back, enough to get some hallowed ground and some vision for those. Any type of harass that can come down that uh, out, out that side. That's true. Yeah, it's a, a not quite a full block on the rocks, but it's not bad. Eh, you get some vision. That's all you want. Sometimes stop those uh, sticky icors. I mean, dervish in this matchup coming in. Sticky angel icors. Oh yeah, really just uh, sticky with their blades everywhere. It could be sticky with blood afterwards. Just or plasma, you. plasma in this matchup. No blood. Yeah, it depends. I mean, the the Centauri oh, have blood. I think that's true. Centauri, Centauri don't, cool. but I think the Centauri do. Wait, Centauri don't. All their blood. Yeah, they got like plasma for. No, was it plasma for blood or I can't remember. Hmm. They, they a bunch of their body is replaced with angel bits. Oh wow. Yeah. Blood. I think I don't know if they have plasma blood, but I know they have the. Their bones are all like rebuilt and everything. Process. Don't recommend yeah. it. Well, I mean, what's the worst that could happen if you don't have the faith necessary to maintain it? The answer is that you just kind of cease to exist in the most total way possible. Well, the universe crushes you for the sheer unreality of your existence. Mm, it's actually worse than, worse than death, probably. Yep. We don't really know. We don't really have a comparison, do we? It's like, oh, yeah, it's like, no, you don't really have a comparison. Well, that your soul doesn't go into one of the Sharus, so kind of. Oh, it's kind of sad, actually. Everyone yeah. wants to go to Sharu. Then you get to uh, kill stuff. 
of Angel Fire. I mean, that's more because they have to, but yeah, yeah that, that does the thing you get to do. You don't get a choice. Oh, and see, Santa playing it extremely safe this time, getting a Citadel there. And we haven't seen Santa put down a single pillar. He's really been completely defensive the whole time. Just defense, defense. Oh, all defense. towers. All towers all day. I mean, I imagine if they got like 25 towers and then all that pyre coming in, that they might start throwing down pillars. Might. I think 25 is the number I'd go with. Yeah, it's going to start there. That starts somewhere. Yeah. And, okay, Santa getting map control as Patch goes just playing it safe, keeping absolvers sieged up at home. Well, as, as I've seen before, Santa Claus will not be hyper aggressive. Like, with this strategy, they do not push. So Magical actually could be moving on in the map a little more than they have been. And they'd be okay. But of course, Sano does sometimes, sometimes do the tricky bit. I always mentioned at the very start of this whole ser or the whole stream that San the fact that Santa has straight up play and has cheese means you're never entirely sure what they're going to do. So you, can never, you can never really know. Like, are they going to go for cheese? Are they going to go for not cheese? What are they doing today? I hope cheese. I love cheese. Mm. Great. It's delicious. You put it in poutine, you put it in grilled cheese, or you just eat it raw. I guess raw cheese is there. No, you'd be, you'd be cooking it first, because otherwise it's got bacteria in everything. Not, not good for you. Don't don't eat raw cheese. I mean, bacteria is pretty good for you. Like, yogurt's all about bacteria, right? Get all that delicious bacteria. Yeah, but it's not raw. It's still pasteurized. Ooh. Okay, Santa thinks... Yeah, Santa can kill an Absolver. He has more than enough army. Even though it's sieged up, he might lose an Atari? Does not lose even. Atari. Not even as Antari. He did lose the Power Miner, though. But you'll take that any day of the week. I mean, Santa's got, what? Again, all these towers. They're fine. Yeah, he doesn't need to keep pushing. He can. But he doesn't need to. Just gotta make sure that Magical hasn't expanded, because this is what killed him last time. Yeah. The hidden bases absolutely ruined them, and Santa's not gonna fall for that twice. Yeah, because that's the only game he lost so far against Magical. Is that secret base. The rest of it, the rest of it, he's been playing really well. It's getting all the advantages. Scepters are out. The Cascader, though, is here to uh, counter it. Uh, but it there's so many ground units. There's so many ground units. So many ground units. The flank from Santa Claus as well, taking out all the Absolvers before they become a threat. Magical has no way in. That's it! Santa Claus takes it! First tournament win off the back of Absolver meta, which Santa Claus has mastered. Congratulations, Santa Claus, for your first Alpha tournament win. In the break... Well... Both break the weekly and Alpha Trials. The first win. Very well played, Santa. Santa like, finding the ways in the meta. Finding his ways around. Finding the perfect attacks. And bringing in some cheese and some cookie strategies in there. Gets it. But also having that just solid, absol like slow push Absolver game. Really came down to just knowing where the weak spot was. And really nailing it at just the right time. Yeah. Consistently. Whew, man. I, I really love that final battle as well. Like, Magic was siege up. Santa's like, I'm not going to siege up. I'm just going to move back and forth and try to keep it from coming. Like, uh, just my yep. final units, keeping your absolvers alive. Perfect, perfect play there. Oof, more absolver micro. That's what you want. <laughs> well, you're going to need it from the sounds of it, but that, that'll be later. That'll be in yep. time. We'll see in the next tournament as uh, Santa won his first tournament, which means he's going to win the next five for sure. <laughs> well, the cur broke the curse anyway. So yeah, well done to you, Santa Claus, for for taking the win. Also, congratulations to Magical for second place and Heatlander for third, which I believe is Heatlander second, third place. Well, that I've counted. <laughs> Always keep going up. I mean, Heatlander has actually been getting like fifth, seventh. They haven't really gotten any decent placements in a long time. Oh, really? I, I thought... I thought he was getting some good, like, 3, 4, or 5. No, 7th is the only one. Alpha 7 is the only one he got 3rd. Mm, still not bad. No, I but mean, it's another 3rd now. Yeah, no. He'll keep getting better. He keeps playing. He'll yep. keep getting better. And, uh, yeah, he beat Zoo, YJ Zoo as well, which is a decent result. As Zoo did get top 8 last in the alpha, big alpha as well, so a lot of good They pirates. got 9th place, didn't they? Right, possibly. A lot of players slowly, slowly but surely getting better. The more they play, the more players we get, the more they can get again. Yeah. All right. Well, that is going to be that. So thank you, all of you who joined the tournament. Thank you, Simus, for organizing, though he had to go to bed before he could 
watch it, but you know, watch the VOD. Thank you, ZK, for helping out with commentary. And thank you, all of you, for watching. And until next time, have a good night, everyone.